You're listening to KEXP. You can find us at 90.3 FM in Seattle, streaming worldwide at kexp.org. And also on our mobile apps, you can take KEXP with you wherever you go. And wherever you go, music from this band will always make you happy. I'm so excited to have back in the KEXP studios, Quasi. Welcome. Hello. Thank thanks you. for having us. Uh, Sam and Janet, it's so great to have you here. The new album, Breaking the Balls of History, out on Sub Pop Records in February. And I'm so excited to hear these songs live. Yeah, thanks. We've been, been on tour trying to fine tune, so hopefully we, we, we bring them to you properly. All right. <laughs> well, here's Quasi live on KEXP. Take it away. Quasi live here in the KEXP studios with a new album at long last. It's called Breaking the Balls of History. It came out in February on Sub Pop Records. Folly and fever conspire to bring you such flux and fog A headache so small 
prison of idleness Messed yourself killing time The immortal
You're listening to Quasi live here in the KEXP studios. Thank you to all of our wonderful viewers for helping to make these sessions possible. This is a listener-powered station, and you can go to KEXP anytime to support great music like this. KEXP Studios. Sam, you rocked your headphones <laughs> off. I almost came over there and fixed them right for you, but I thought that might throw you off more. <laughs> I wasn't thrown off. <laughs> that was a great. A little chaos is nice. You're a pro. You weren't thrown off at all. It's Quasi here in the KEXP Studios playing songs from the new album, Breaking the Balls of History. That sounded so fantastic. Thanks so much. Thanks. I love it. And you know, it Sounds a lot like the record because you really recorded this to sound like the songs are being played live. Was that a big departure, Janet? I know that you have fun in the studio sometimes. Was it hard to keep your fingers out of <laughs> maybe putting a little bit more production on the record? I think we decided well in advance uh, of studio time that the intention was going to be to make this raw, live um, you know, rambunctious, and so I had some time to sit with it and just, you know, realize that I wasn't going to get to be, like, overdubbing and, you know, doing all the little 
things that I, I do love doing those, but our previous record had a lot of that kind of made it home, spent lots of time adding to songs, um, our, our record Mole City. So it was, I think a change is really good for musicians and bands and to kind of have this um, intentional like idea before we went in um, so we could kind of write the songs with that in mind. Like, you know, the songs have to be able to be played, the two of us, and have them sound full and, um, you know, full, fully there and, and finished. So, yeah, I think um, we took that to the, to the next level. Well, speaking of your previous record, Mole City, that came out 10 years ago. And I know that both of you are very active and you play some shows and you even go on little tours in the last 10 years and obviously very busy with other projects. But I feel like Quasi is like a rare and beautiful plant that I have in my house that maybe doesn't have any flowers for years and years. But I know that if I just wait patiently, I'm going to get this beautiful surprise of this amazing bloom. And so I knew that I was going to hear from you again, but 10 years was a while. Was there some specific impetus to start working on new songs? Well, I mean, we had some roadblocks. <laughs> I got in a bad car accident um, with my partner and, you know, broke my legs and my collarbone. And that was a big roadblock. And then the pandemic was another roadblock, with, which actually, um, for live performances, um, kind of, you know, put the, put the damper on that. But as far as writing and, and recording and practicing, it opened up a lot of time for us to be able to work on new material. And uh, I was recovering and I just decided that the best thing for me would be to play drums every day and to play quasi, which is very active. And um, I felt like it would bring me back quicker emotionally and physically. So Sam agreed that he would he would do that with me and we just started practicing every day. And out of that came um, some material. I mean, Sam was bringing in really good songs um, which was exciting and gave me more impetus to like get better and be able to play well again. Um, but yeah, maybe, maybe the pandemic actually helped your, like yeah, your so songwriting. I mean, with, with Quasi now, we're not, uh, once we got off the uh, sort of album tour, album tour, keep working cycle, it just, there's no, uh, now it's sort of when the music decides that it, it wants to be heard, I think, uh, then we respond to that. We, we don't really, there's no reason to, to, to push it if, if there's nothing there. So kind of just got to wait. You've always used your music to talk about things that matter to you. I mean, you have years and years of experience and you support the things that you care about. You mix comedy and politics in such a unique and interesting way. And... I'm just wondering how you, do you think about balancing those two concepts or is it just what kind of flows from you? It's funny, the comedy thing, I, I'm not um, much of a comedian and I have a very bad sense of humor and, um, and yet people find the humor in, in, in these songs, but it, I think it's just an accident. I think sometimes uh, if you just say something in a very plain way and maybe if you need to rhyme it, you can put a little twist on it because you're really searching for an angle for a rhyme, really. Sometimes it, it, it becomes funny. Um, that's not an intent at all, though. <laughs> I do feel <laughs> but, there is an intent, though, with the kind of the heavy and the not as heavy like that's the, true the yin and the yang of the music i feel always like always the marriage of opposites is something i'm thinking of uh yeah yin and yang light and dark serious humor hard soft male female all that stuff goes into the process i just feel like there's so much to dig into every time i listen to the record or listen to a song i feel like there's another layer there feels like there's a dystopian worldview there, but I find it surges with energy and joy as well. I think that's very important. And um, we, are, we intend the music to be, 
you know, uplifting and to, to be meaningful, really. You know, we want it to matter to people. It matters to us. So I feel like the, with Quasi, it's, the idea is to, like, put ourselves wholly into it, um, you know, our, our, our energy. And we're, we're different, you know. So, like, those contrasts kind of show up in a kind of interesting way, I think, as well. Or, like, there's only two of us. And, um, you know, a lot of our ethos and our ideas are, the, you know, are similar, but there's also parts of us that are really different. And those kind of tensions make the music sort of more explosive. With your decades of experience working together and, of course, working with many other people where you gain knowledge and experience, has the process of working together changed much for you over 30 years? Probably, but subtly, slowly. Um, we, everything with this band, we, we try to do it in an organic way. We don't, like, sit down and, uh, you know, come up with a 30-point plan and... and, and and, you know, we don't reinvent ourselves every time we make a record. It's all just, it all just flows from where we're at at, at a given time. And um, since we've changed as people over time, I think our approach has probably changed. But um, that's... We try to root it in, like, respect, you know, <laughs> and um, keep that... I mean, that we know each other really well. So there's things that I know Sam's not going to want to do, and I would never push one of those things. And he, there's things I don't want to do. And we try to encourage each other to like show our personalities. I mean, I, I feel like I would not be the drummer I am if not for Sam encouraging me to be rowdy, you know? Like I've said before that if there's two choices, I give him, what do you like better, this or this? And he always picks the rowdy choice. Um, where a lot of singers or people who write songs, they want the song to be at the, for, at the forefront. But for us, the performance and the connection um, and our friendship and all that is kind of takes a, up a very important space in the music. I love it. It sounds very grounding. I can just picture Sam coming in and saying, here's a song I wrote in the bathtub. Exactly. What, should, what should we do with this? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty close to how it works, actually. <laughs> Well, I can't tell you how overjoyed I am to be seeing you together playing live. I know so many fans are not only excited about this record, but excited to see you back out on the road. And Janet, anyone who's ever met you adores you and is so happy <laughs> to see you feeling strong and healthy and back behind the drum yeah, kit. Yeah, thank you. It's, it's been quite a, quite a journey and just I feel so thrilled and just appreciative that that I can do this again that every night I'm just so excited to play well we can hear and feel the joy thank you so much for coming by today thanks for it's having us it was great pleasure. to see thank you thank you again. so much we're so happy to have Quasi live here in the KEXB studios once again breaking the balls of history the brand new album out on Sub Pop Records and get out and see this band live it is just an exhilarating experience to be in the room with the two of them making all this beautiful music. Thank you again also to our wonderful listeners and viewers for making these sessions possible. You can learn more about us at kexp.org. Once again, a big thanks to Quasi Live here on KEXP Seattle. Thank, Thank you. you.